yeah here with you excited to keep talking about running because that's my life <laughs> awesome very cool well for sake of time and attention spans i'm going to jump in so for those who don't know us i'm holly i'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and tyler is joining me today from moose space pt he is a runner he's a physical therapist he's a running coach so i'm going to be asking him some questions today to help those of you who run so one of the things that i think is really cool about what you do is you're not only a physical therapist but you're also a run coach so you're able to kind of blend those two worlds maybe help people coach them through their running training with injury prevention and all that in mind so can you just kind of explain a little bit more about what you do how you do those two things and what you offer to runners um so yeah i so i'm a physical therapist by trade and i'm also but i've also been uh, a coach, a strength conditioning, conditioning specialist, and then went into run coaching uh, afterwards. And the reason I kind of got into coaching as well is because I noticed a lot of the issues that runners have uh, can be really addressed and fixed from coach, from a coaching perspective, especially their training program. Because a lot of the injuries that runners have are often due to training error. That can be a, that can be attributed to well over half of all running injuries is due to training error. So hmm. I found that if I can help um, on the front end, with their training plan from the get-go, we can minimize a ton of injuries um, down the pipeline as they as people get ready to run uh, different races or you know different distances, et cetera. So it sounds like that running plan, any program that someone's doing, it's super important that that is well planned and well thought out. Totally, it's uh, and that's the hard part for a lot of runners, I think, because like everyone, there's a lot, there's a million plans out there, right? Like so many, it's like, well, what plan is, am I supposed to do? Uh, and it's tough because plans really, they really do need to be personalized if you want the best outcome. And if you're someone who's very injury prone, then even more so it's important to get a personalized plan from a coach or someone who knows what they're, they're doing when it comes to a running program. Um, so that's where I try to fill in the gap. Now, a lot of people can get away with generic programs for a while too, but then those people, they may hit a plateau in their training where they're not getting faster or you know they want a PR, they want a Boston qualified, but they're just like not getting there. And that's where they may need to move out of a generic plan into something uh, more customized to them. So then it's, it sounds like if someone were halfway through their training plan, they're like, Oh, I'm getting an ankle thing or a knee thing. Then they could come back to you and say, this is happening. And you could start to prevent that from getting any worse probably as you're coaching them. Yeah. I mean, ideally the sooner I can see them, the better. Um, sometimes people see me two weeks before race day. There's obviously less, um, less we can do in that short amount of time. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've worked with lots of people who maybe are two months into their training and they're like, Oh, like Achilles is hurting, knees hurting, hips hurting. Um, is there something we can do to get them back on course, get them ready for the race? And there is a lot of stuff we can do. It's going to highly vary depending on the runner, their injury, their timeline, their training goals. Sometimes we have to adjust the goals because maybe they're trying to go for some really in insane PR in like two months. And maybe the goal needs to be, well, let's just get through this race pain free. Then we work on getting that PR in a future race. And sometimes I have to have those discussions because I think a lot of runners, um, are impatient and a little stubborn if i'm being honest and i'm one of those people so you know I'm, I'm saying this as a runner who has been stubborn and impatient and that can oftentimes lead to more problems so i think that's those are discussions i have with every runner when we are figuring out okay we're injured what's the where are we trying to go let's let's figure out a plan but also adjust expectations if needed right okay great and i know a lot of people have knee issues that's a very common problem for runners so, you know, I know there's a lot of different reasons why injuries can happen, but in your experience, have you found, like, are there a few common reasons for knee pain? And if so, could you share maybe some of the more common ones that people may run into? Sure. So there's, I mean, there's a plethora of different knee injuries that could happen, but I guess if I could put it in one bucket, runners are going to deal with uh, typically overuse type injuries. So you're thinking like patellar tendinopathy, uh, patellar femoral pain syndrome, runner's knee, as it's colloquially called. Um, but no matter what kind of knee injury you're probably dealing with as a runner, nine out of 10 times, you're probably dealing with an overuse, overtraining type injury, meaning your, your knee, you're putting so much strain on the knee that it just can't handle the demands you're putting on it. So you're, maybe you're running too much too soon. Um, or the flip side, maybe you're not strong enough or powerful enough to handle those running demands, which is actually, I think, more common where people don't do enough strength training or power training to be able to handle the loads of running on the knee. And so when they ramp up their mileage, their knee is just unable to keep up with it. And then that breakdown in homeostasis leads to an injury, uh, which again, comes back down to the program design. So like I mentioned, training error, that's a big problem. And that happens a lot with knee injuries and overuse injuries. So that's, that's the one big thing is probably just getting your training program right for what you can handle. 
but then also making your body more prepared to handle the running, whether it's with strength training, power training, stuff like that. Um, and then there's also some running form stuff too. We can look at a lot of people who overstride, meaning they're landing too far in front of their body when they're running can lead to some higher uh, peak forces in the knee when they're hitting the ground. So sometimes we may need to make changes to running form as well. Um, and it's usually honestly a combination of all those things I mentioned. It's never one thing in particular. Um, but yeah, those are probably the most common reasons, the training error, um, limited capacity to handle the impact of running on the knees and then running form. That's very helpful. I have also noticed that not many runners make time or triathletes do make time for strength training. Um, and just don't think it's that important. And I have a background as a personal trainer, so I'm definitely big on the strength training. Um, so it is interesting to hear that it's a lot of times it's just your body isn't strong enough essentially to keep up with the running demand. So it is important to do strength training. Definitely. And then we got research to back it up too that strength training or plyometric training can definitely help with running performance quite a bit. Um, we're still looking, I think there's not enough research to see like how it can affect injury like risk um, yet. But if you talk to most coaches, if you if you improve someone's performance, you're probably going to improve their risk of getting hurt. So that's kind of the rationale I use is like, if I can make you a more efficient runner, you're going to be more prepared to handle it and you're going to be less likely to get hurt. So I think there's a lot of that, even if the research hasn't caught up completely, I think it doesn't, no one, I've never had a runner complain about being too strong. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. That's very helpful. Um, and then just sort of like injuries in general, right? Cause it's not just going to be knees. Um, so I know as a nutritionist, like nutrition plays a key role in keeping people healthy and preventing injuries, but as a physical therapist, as a run coach, um, I know there's a lot of stuff that people could be doing to prevent injuries, but maybe like, what are the top two to three, um, things, whether that's specific exercises or kind of more broad, like you were just talking about, maybe your run planning, what would be some of the, the key things you would say that runners should be doing to try to prevent injuries? So, so. Yeah, there's probably a million things I could suggest, but I mean, one big thing, yeah, have a training plan, structure. I think that's going to be huge. Even if you, if you have to start with a generic plan, just have some sort of structure that can keep you consistent because running is all about uh, consistency. If you want to be a better runner, you guys got to do it for a long time and be consistent and not make too many drastic changes along the way. If you look at some of the best runners who hit maybe these big PRs or later in their life, it's because they've been running for years and they've been building slowly, slowly, and slowly. So uh, have a plan, have some structure, that's going to take you a long way. Then I would say next, next is probably, yeah, doing other forms of training outside of running, like strength training, like plyometrics, maybe some cross training as well, um, to add, to build up your different, uh, kind of different systems in your body that you don't really get to train that well with running alone. So don't, don't just run only, like, I love running. I think you'll get a ton of health benefits, but don't neglect the rest of your fitness as well, because that's going to make you a well-rounded athlete and just a healthier human being. Um, and then I think the third thing is probably, uh, focusing on your recovery. And I think this is where people get a little, uh, lost because recovery is, can be a buzzword and, and recovery is a little nebulous. Cause when you say recovery or you type it on Google, you're going to get like all sorts of stuff. You're going to get, um, massage, you're going to get ice cryotherapy. You're going to get, um, acupuncture. You're going to get, uh, laser, infrared laser, all that stuff. And that stuff is all, there's positives in all of that stuff, but the the modalities like that aren't the things that drive the needle for recovery. The big thing, the big needle movers are things that are honestly just not as sexy to talk about, like your sleep. Like, are you sleeping eight hours? Because like almost every runner I talk to is not sleeping eight hours. Like barely, they're barely getting six hours. And if you're not sleeping, that's where the majority of tissue healing is occurring. So like when you're putting all your, your body through all that stress with running, it's gotta heal, right? But most of that healing is happening when you're sleeping. So if you ain't sleeping, no wonder you're feeling terrible as you're ramping up your mileage because your body just isn't having a chance to recover. So sleep is huge. In addition to making sure you're eating right, eating enough, and you know this more than probably anybody else, right? As people who under fuel, it's a huge problem. Um, and so, I mean, if you're not fueling properly, you're putting yourself at a higher risk for a lot of injuries, especially the biggest concern for me is bone stress injuries. Yeah. Because these are super hard. These are harder to recover from and they can really put someone out of the running game for a while, depending on, uh, the location of the bone stress injury, the, the severity, et cetera. So, and, and food and fueling is a big part of that. So, you know, that's why I always love working with dietitians when we are potentially dealing with a bone stress injury, because it becomes a team effort at that point, because I need to make sure they're eating right, because if they're not, it doesn't matter. So, so recovery in general, sleep, fuel, probably stress management as well, I'd throw that in there. Those are going to help prevent tons of injuries um, down the pipeline. Okay.
Okay, cool. Yeah, it's good that you point those out. Like you said, they're not the sexiest. It's not as cool as cryotherapy or, you know, laser. Know. Yeah. A lot of people will jump to that cool, fun stuff and forget the fundamentals of food, rest, sleep, you know, all those things you mentioned. Um, all right, so maybe not so focused on injury prevention, but like, let's say a more beginner runner, mm -hmm. right? They probably have so many, I mean, we probably have running questions our whole running career, but especially at the beginning, there's so much to learn and um, experience. So for somebody who's maybe more like beginner, intermediate, maybe working on getting faster, spending more time running, said, what advice would you give to them? I know it's a very broad, <laughs> uh, general question, but one or two things that pop into mind. Uh, you know, be patient. Just be patient. Don't worry about um, don't worry about getting to where your goals like immediately because you know you got plenty of time. <laughs> the, the cool thing about distance running is uh, people can hit their peaks in that sport for like like it, it, well into their life. Like you don't have to. It's different than like let's say like sprinting, where our peak power in sprinting is probably occurring in like our twenties, and then it's going to taper off as we get older. When it comes to distance running. We're primarily using type one slow twitch muscles that don't taper off like much at all throughout our life. So you can be run, you can be kicking butt in like a marathon well into your forties, fifties, even your sixties, if you're training right. So, I mean, you have time, don't worry. You're not, you shouldn't be peaking in your thirties if you're doing it right. And I think a lot of runners think I'm going to, I got to qualify for Boston now. Otherwise, you know, I won't do it. It's like, no, you actually may have a better shot in a decade if you, continue to be consistent, be patient, not to mention the qualifying time is going to slow down anyway as you get older. So, you know, you might have a better shot then. But yeah, patience, I think is huge. And then the other thing is, uh, yeah, comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. So don't compare to someone else who may be more experienced or faster. There will always be somebody faster than you, always. So don't worry about them because they're not worrying about you. They're worrying about themselves and they're, they're comparing themselves to someone faster than them. So it's okay. Just work on yourself. Uh, yeah, pr progress in many different ways. Even PRs are not also not the only way to progress. Sometimes it's just being consistent. Sometimes it's like getting through a race without getting injured. That's a PR, you know? So think of other ways to PR as well. One thing that's really unique about you is that you do most of your training virtually. Um, so I think that's pretty rare from what I know with physical therapists, because it tends to be a very like hands-on, you got to come into the office and meet. Um, so can you kind of explain a little bit more about how you do things virtually and what that might look like for someone? Yeah. So, yeah, I know I get that question a lot, too. It's like, well, isn't physical therapy a hands-on profession? But, you know, really the problems that runners face are not necessarily uh, like hands-on problems. And what I mean by that is that, you know, we talked about earlier that the majority of running injuries are due to training error. Right. So hands-on therapy, manual therapy, isn't going to fix training error. Training error is going to be fixed by building a program that's designed for your personal needs based off whatever your injury and goals are. So I don't need to be in person to do that, thankfully. You know, I um, can build, help people build programs and systems to get them to where they want to be by adjusting their program, um, by working on the things they need to work on a little more, whether it's strength training, power, mobility, et cetera. Um, and a lot of these things we can test remotely. I test a lot of this on Zoom. And uh, yeah, it puts, also puts the power in your own hands that you don't have to do, you don't have to rely on me, like mm. being hands on. I think that's important too. It gives them a lot of self efficacy and uh, power to like realize, okay, like you can do this. You just need a little guidance. That's all. Yeah, that's a great point. So if someone does want to work with you, because they can work with you from wherever, what would be their next step in like contacting you and trying to find out more information started? Yeah, the easiest way is, well, on my Instagram, I have a, a call link um, to where I offer 45 minute free consultations to any runner who wants help with an injury or running performance. They want to hit a PR maybe. Uh, but yeah, that call link's in my Instagram bio. So, you know, go ahead, my profile page, give me a follow, and then you can book a call there, um, whatever time works best for you. And then yeah, 45 minutes, deep dive. And we figure out if I'm the right fit or not. And if I'm not the right fit, I'll let you know. And then I'll, I'll at least point you in the direction that you need to go to get the help you need. Okay. Okay, that's great. Yeah, 45 minute consult is awesome for free. A long chunk of time. So very cool. Um, any last thoughts you want to share with the audience? Mm, not really. I think I think we covered a lot, Holly. You asked some great questions. So uh, no, I appreciate you going on live with me again. I thought last time was pretty fun too. And I learned a, lot, a ton about FODMAPs and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm even thinking about like how to manipulate those for myself because uh, I was running with some goo. Like, I, I think I need to maybe transition out of my goos maybe because yeah. they were starting to after i'm eating six or seven of them i'm starting to like run into some issues but yeah 
I got two weeks till my next race, so I'm not going to make the change this time. But for the next cycle, um, I might switch to something like I think you said the Humas were a uh, uh, little bit better on your list, your your guide. So, but uh, yeah, no, this was fun. All right, awesome. Well, thanks for joining, and thanks for all of the great tips and wisdom and insights. I know people will appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Holly. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, have a great rest of your day. You too. Talk to you later. All right. Take, Bye. take care.